Welcome to my lecture online. The Earth is teeming with life, all different life forms, in the oceans, on land, in the air. And where did it all come from? How did life start? Well, before we can answer that question, we should explore what life actually is. And so, even though not any one definition can be good enough to explain all life, and some forms are kind of on the cusp of what life is and what life may not be. But here we have a list of things that will give us a pretty good idea of how to define life. And then we can go on and try to figure out how did it get here? Where did it come from? So we can say that life is capable of doing the following things. It's able to reproduce. So we have a life form for that life form to continue living on the earth. It needs to be able to reproduce, essentially making copies of itself. It needs to be capable of growing. It can start from a small size and then end up with a bigger size. So it needs to be able to do that. It should be capable of functional activity. There needs to be all kinds of activity going on, including chemical reactions within that life in order to obtain the various capabilities. So it has to be able to process things and react things in such a way to go from one condition to another condition. So it has to have that ability to do that functional activity as we've seen in a previous video that having water available, that's where a lot of these processes can take place. So most life is based upon having a large content of water to be able to do that. It needs to be able to utilize food and energy. It needs energy. Life needs energy in order to live. And it gets that in one way or another. Now plants, for example, can take sunlight and use chlorophyll in order to produce glucose in the building materials for itself and oxygen. Animal life, well, they need to ingest material like glucose in order to provide the energy, to break it down, to provide energy in order to live. But whatever it is, it needs to be able to process energy and some sort of food and or, because it could just be energy, to do the following thing. But then again, what is food? Food is again something that provides energy and it also provides the basic building blocks of itself. It needs to be able to respond to stimuli. All life will respond to the outside in some way. Be it the presence of food, the presence of an enemy, the presence of something that it interacts with and it will respond to that in some way. So life tends to be able to have the ability to have some sort of response to any sort of stimuli. It has to have a metabolism. Metabolism simply means that you take in energy and food and then utilize that in order to for locomotion, locomotion, in order for digestion, in order to make copies of itself, to repair itself, whatever it may be. You have to have that metabolism that allows it to do that. It needs to be able to transform energy or if it doesn't have energy by itself, for example, plant can take in sunlight and utilize that energy, but an animal, well, or other sort sorts of types of life they need to be able to take in food and then utilize the energy locked in that food so again it's a transforming of energy life also has to have the ability to die if it can't die then it's not alive so that it it has all these particular functions and at some point it ceases to do those functions it simply dies and those processes simply stop it has to be able to repair itself, any sort of damage, typically, if damage is not too severe, otherwise it might die, it can then repair itself. And finally, in order to make copies of itself, it has to have some coding mechanism that tells it how to make that copy. If it makes another cell, a duplicate of a cell, or if it makes a copy of itself, it needs to have that instruction that code that tells us what it looks like and how to build that new structure. And so there needs to be some sort of, well, a code, and we have that code here called the DNA. It's the molecule that enables us, or, or the set of molecules that enables us to make copies of ourselves and all life utilizes that same kind of mechanism in order to do that. So it is true that there may be cases of life where not all of these apply, but the great majority will apply and it really is a good differentiator between life and non-life. Remember again that at some point the earth 
was a very hot place. The surface may have been in a molten state due to the, the ubiquitous collisions of material falling into the earth and slowly building up to the planet that it is. There was absolutely no possibility of life at that moment. Eventually, over the millions of years, the earth cooled down. It then received impact of meteors and comets and all that it began to bring water back to the surface of the earth and then so much of it landed on the earth that it formed uh, oceans. But again, at the very beginning, life did not exist. Something that fills this set of categories did not exist. But now the earth is filled with teeming life. So how did we go from an earth with no life to an earth with life? Now that we have the definition of what life is, we can now try to explore how life actually started on the earth. Where did it come from? Well, stay tuned and we'll have another video exploring that aspect of life.